a, where is that? Okay, right here at negative 2, negative 6. Its equation is written in the form y equals mx plus b. How would the equation of kx change if point b were translated three units down? So if I were to take this point b and move it three units down, how is that going to change the equation of the line? So this is saying that the slope would decrease by 3, the slope, slope would decrease by 0.5, the slope would remain the same, and the slope would decrease by 0.5. Which one can we definitely get rid of? Right, the slope remaining the same. It definitely does not. Our slope definitely lessens. So on the first line, it was a rise of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 in a run of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the first slope was 9, 6, which is 3 halves. Now it's only going to be a rise of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, run 6. So the slope used to be 1 and a half, now it's only 1. So it decreased specifically by a half, which is what I would have guessed anyway. Not that I would encourage you take, to take a test this way, but when two of the four are the same and the other two are different, it's probably going to narrow down to those two if you are feeling totally clueless. Um, and then the y-intercept, b would either decrease by three or b would decrease by one. So if you look at, obviously the y-intercept was negative three. Now if I'm just going up one over one, up one over one, because this one has a slope of one, my b only decreased by 1. So the answer is 4. All right, no problem. Any questions on that? So a little bit of transformations, equations of lines type stuff there. Um, number 22, I have batteries. Yep. Oh, good. Was it Google? Oh, good. Yes, you, of course. All right, number 22. 48.6% of the North Dakota population over 18 years old is female. 65.9% of the total population of North Dakota over 18 years old has enrolled in college at some point in their lives. So, what are we... Um, what kind of variables are we looking at the relationship between... Like if you were to do a Venn diagram. Yep. People going to college, not necessarily females. But female and going to college, yes. The whole thing about population over 18 years old is real. It's, it's consistent whether you're dealing with females or... So that's kind of in there as not fluff, but you don't need that information. So it's really just female and um, going to college. So if you were to create a Venn diagram with female and college, 48.6% is female. So this X and Y would have to add up to 48.6. And 65.9% of the total population has enrolled in college at some point in their lives. So the Y plus Z would have to be 65.9. Now, I don't know if we're going to have enough information to complete this, because I'm already suspicious, because I read ahead and saw if these two events are independent of each other. So um, they're telling us, assume that these two events are independent of each other, what is the probability that a randomly selected adult in North Dakota will be a female who has enrolled in college? So essentially, both, right? Now, we don't have enough information yet to like do a system of equations, because we don't know what x plus y plus z all together is supposed to add up to, because there's also this other variable out here that would be in none of those categories. Um, but when they tell you events or probability, you can do an and probability just by multiplying. If you know that events are independent, then the probability of being a female and going to college 
is just going to be taking the probability of being a female and multiplying it by the probability of going to college. That's a stipulation that only is allowable when events are independent. And so that's why they told you that, because all we have to do is multiply 0.486 times 0.659. And I get 32%. So that answer is 1. Okay, on number 23, what is the 13th term of the sequence? So let's talk sequences and series here for a second. Is this arithmetic or geometric? Geometric, because the pattern is multiply by 2 by 2 by 2. Is this a sequence or a series question? Series means they're indicating at some point that you have to add all the terms together, which they're not doing, correct? No, no mention of adding it in any way, shape, or form. So they just straight up want the 13th term of a geometric sequence. We have a reference sheet for that, which is on the front. So your geometric sequence formula is right here. Make sure, obviously, we become familiar with this. That's why I've included it with all these tests. So that formula is a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. Okay? So what do I plug in and where? Start, give me one thing that I can plug in and where, Kaylee Smith. A of 1 is 3, good. Okay, something else. Jay Kutch? Thirteen for N, so A sub thirteen, and then I have an exponent of thirteen minus one. And Lydia? R is two. The rate is times two times two, so R equals two. So you just have to type into your calculator 3 times 2 to the 12th power. 12,288. So A sub 13 is 12,288. In other words, the 13th term is 12,288. Option 3. Okay? Any questions on sequences and series in general? Okay, number 24, we have the accompanying function models the cost in dollars of a designer necklace, X years. What would you say about the shape of this? What type of function would you say it is, Bo? Exponential, more specific, growth or decay? Decay, very good. Um, if the trend continues and the necklace is sold 100 years after it was first purchased, use the graph to approximate the cost at the time it is sold. This is tricky. I remember hating this one. Um, at the time, but because if by the time you get 20, uh, 30, 40, 50, 60, it's really hard to see how low it's going to be. Right now, by year 50, it looks like it's already at like 30 or 20 ish, right? How do we really know if it gets as low as 12 or as low as 5? These are out because it's already lower than that. But a hundred years afterwards, I'm thinking the only thing we could maybe try to do is to, because right now it's, those are so close it's hard to just predict. I'm thinking what if I took this point, which is 10, 100, and... Do you see any other perfect, perfect points? I think it's above 300. I think even that would be an estimate. Let me just say, okay, we'll say it's 320? 330? I'll go 330. This is, this is a terrible question, in my opinion, FYI. Oh, you know what? Just for the record right now, What's up, Nate? I was going to say 2050. 2050. Oh, yeah, it does. 
Um, it is still guessing. I'm going to use this just because it is the y-intercept. If I know the y-intercept, which variable do I already know? Which one? Nope. B is the rate, the kind of the rate of decay or um, rate of growth. The y-intercept is your a value. And then I can use this other point, 10, 100, and I can plug that in and see what B would be. So 100, I'd have to divide by 330. And that would give me 0 0.30 repeating equals B to the 10th. How do I get rid of this 10th power? Raise it to the reciprocal. Right, to get rid of the 10th power, you raise it to the 1 tenth power. And I would get that B equals 0.88745962929. So, I know that's long, but Y equals 330, and then this 0.887 number to the X. So if I wanted to see 100 years in, I'm going to do 330 times that answer. I'm going to steal it exactly to the 100th power. And it's down to 21 cents. Which means this question is even worse than I thought. Hmm. Um, so, I mean, we were able to review a few things out of it, but I just don't, I, th I think it's a, a throw, like I said, this is not a regions question. Nathan? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know who writes this nonsense. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. There's not even, yeah. Um, all right. We will stop there. Your homework is going to be, again, 1 through 10, 25 through 28, and 33 to 34 on this. Okie doke.